Fa'idatun muhimma. Important benefit. Hunaka masailu adidatun yavunuha ba'adun nasi mujma'an alayha. There are numerous cases that some people think are matters of consensus. Inda kulli ulama il Islam. They think that these are matters that are agreed upon by all of the scholars of Islam. Wal amru laysa kadalik, and the matter is not as such. Wa mithalu dalik al aklu fi Ramadan. An example of that is eating during Ramadan. Fa inna hu yantahi bidukhur al fajr. The time of eating stops by the break of dawn. وَهَذَا مَا عَلَيْهِ جُمْهُورُ عُلَمَاءِ الْإِسْلَامِ This is the position taken by the majority of the scholars of Islam. That you have to stop eating by the break of dawn. You can't eat during the dawn. The dawn is included in the time that you cannot eat. وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ And that's what's correct. وَفِيهِمْ مَنْ هُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ لِجْتِهَادِ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ and amongst the mujtahids is a tabi'i, a follower of the companions who made a mistake. Fakal, he said, Yajuzul aklu ila tulu'i shams. Whoever made this mistake said, It's permissible to eat until sunrise. So, you know, dawn ends by sunrise. What's correct is that you have to stop eating by the dawn. Not that you can eat through the dawn until sunrise. The scholars did not deem the one who said that as a disbeliever. And so it is not permissible to rush to deem a person as a kafir. Meaning, you heard someone say, it's permissible to eat during the dawn in Ramadan. So you might think, someone might think, what? That's kufr. How can you eat that time? Because he imagines that this is something that all of the scholars have agreed upon. He doesn't know or conceive that this is a matter of difference in opinion. So one should not rush to deem a person as a kafir because of his assumption of something being a case of consensus. And not just that, remember that it's not simply that something is a matter of consensus that makes a person a kafir if he disagrees with it. Very important case. Being a matter of consensus is part of it. What the consensus contributes to the takfir, deeming someone a kafir, is that whatever is a matter of consensus is definitely correct. But just because it's definitely correct, that doesn't mean that if someone goes against it, he's always a kafir. Because you still have to factor in also if the issue is something known in the religion by necessity. If it's known in the religion by necessity and it's a matter of consensus, then yes. Whoever denies it will commit blasphemy. But if it's not known in the religion by necessity, then the one who denies it doesn't blaspheme even if it's a matter of consensus. And let alone if it's not even a matter of consensus amongst the mujtahids then the one who denies it does not blaspheme. That's why you're not going to deem someone as a blasphemer for saying that he could perform sodomy with his wife in particular, the wife in particular. Rather, that's wrong like this is wrong. That saying is wrong like the one we're talking about is wrong. You're not going to say he committed kufr for that. العلماء الذين مضوا اختلفوا في مسائل كثيرة. The scholars who have passed have differed about 
many cases. Not most cases, though. كَقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ Like reciting the Qur'an in prayer. فَإِنَّ مِنَ الثَّلَفِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْإِجْتِهَادِ مَنْ قَالَ مَنْ أَتَمَّ رُكُوعَهُ وَسُجُودَهُ فَصَلَاتُهُ صَحِيحًا For indeed, amongst the salaf, amongst the people of ijtihad, there was who said that if someone completes his bowing position and his prostration, then his prayer is valid. A walaw lam yakra shay'am min al Qur'an fi qiyami. They mean even if he didn't recite any Qur'an while standing. So there, you might, that's another case. What if someone said, you don't have to recite in your prayer for your prayer to be valid. So you might assume that that's kufr, what? Sheikh is telling us this is not something that the scholars agreed upon so that you should deem a person as a kafir. If he said that, Strange saying. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَالَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ لَيْسَ رُكْنًا لَيْسَ رُكْنًا لِلْدُّخُولِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ And some of them said, saying, Allahu Akbar is not a condition, is not an integral for entering into the prayer. بَلْ تَكْفِي نِيَةُ بِدُونِ تَكْبِيرِ Some of them said, the intention is enough even without saying, Allahu Akbar. فَإِذَا نَوَى أَنَّهُ يُصَلِّي صَلَاةَ كَذَا so had someone intended that he's praying such and such prayer. Yakfi Binduni Yukabbir. This would be enough for the validity of his prayer without saying Allahu Akbar. The one who said that is Imam Muhammad ibn Muslim as Zuhri, one of the junior tabi'een. What does it mean that he's a junior tabi'i? Means that he only narrates from a companion or two. The tabi'oon were those who met the companions, the students of the companions. And the tabi'oon, there are Seniors and juniors. Al-Kibar, seniors, and as juniors. The senior tabi'oon are those who most of what they report comes from the Sahaba. And the junior tabi'oon are those who only report from a companion or two. Sheikh saying, this one's a mujtahid though. So don't let that word junior fool you. وَهُنَاكَ مَسَائِلُ أُخْرَى مِنْ هَذَا النَّوْعَ And there are other cases of this type. فَلَا يَنْبَغِي التَّسَرْلُعَ So it's not proper to rush to deem a person as a kafir. وَلَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَبْنِيَ الشَّقْسُ التَّكْفِيرَ عَلَى حَسَبِ الْوَهَمْ And it should not be that a person bases a charge of blasphemy on imagination or delusion or assumption. بَلْ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَبْنِيَهُ عَلَى الْإِحْتِيَاطِ مَعَ النَّظَرِ فِي حَالِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ Rather, one should base his charge of blasphemy on precaution. Yani he needs to be carefully sure that that's kufr. If someone asks you, is this kufr? You don't have to give him an answer instantaneously, necessarily. If you need to think, then think. If you need to say, I'll get back to you, then say, I'll get back to you. And if you need to say, I don't know, then say, I don't know. And you don't have to be afraid to say, I don't know if that's blasphemy or not. What What if I said, it? what, what if it's blasphemy? And then I said, I don't know. Is that blasphemy? In the first place... Someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, then what are you supposed to say? You say, I don't know. That's number one. Number two, you don't have to think about everything that someone says to you, also. So just because a person said something to you and you don't take the time to think about it and ponder on it, 
then there's no blasphemy here. So this is a way a person could say, I don't know, to something. Even sometimes there's a case that had you thought about it, you would know. If you just think, you could get to the answer. But you don't think about it. And you don't have to. So if you don't know, then say, I don't know. And don't think about it too hard. And some people, they ask me some questions about blasphemy. And maybe they think they offend me because I don't answer them. Like if it's a text. But you didn't offend me. But a lot of times, I'm not going to think about it. So, بَلْ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَبْنِيَهُ عَلَى الْإِحْتِيَاطِ مَعَ النَّظَرِ فِي حَالِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ Rather, one should base his charge of blasphemy on precaution while looking into the case, looking into the situation of the case at hand. هَلْ هِيَ مُجْمَعٌ عَلَيْهَا أَوْ لَا Is it a case of consensus or not? ثُمَّ هَلْ هِيَ مَعْلُومَةٌ مِنَ الدِّينِ بِالضَّرُورَةِ أَوْ لَا And then furthermore, if it is a case of consensus, is it something known in the religion by necessity or not? وَبَعْدَ ذَلِكَ يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي حُكْمِ قَائِلِهَا After that, he can speak about the judgment of the one who said whatever the statement is, whatever the case is. أَمَّا مَا كَانَ اسْتِخْفَافًا بِاللَّهِ أَوْ رَسُولِهِ أَوْ مَلَائِكَتِهِ أَوْ دِينِهِ أَوْ شَعَائِرِ الْإِسْلَامِ But concerning sacrilege, disrespect for God, or His Messenger, or His angels, or His religion, or the signs of His religion, the symbols of the religion, أو كان نوعا من أنواع تشبيه الله بالعالم. Or if one's case were some type of comparing Allah to the creations. أو نفيا للصفات الثلاثة عشرة الواجبة لله. Or it is some form of atheism, denying any of the thirteen attributes of Allah. أو اعتقاد أن بعض المخلوقات توجد بغير مشيئة الله Or it is a case of denial of destiny Believing that some creations exist without the will of God فلا ينبغي التوقف في تكفير من صدرت منه Then it's not proper to pause in deeming the one from whom this issued forth as a disbeliever مَهْمَا كَانَ غَارِقًا فِي الْجَهْلِ Regardless of how ignorant this one were. And, Yani, that includes, though, that the issue is clear. What the Shaykh is saying here is for something that's clear blasphemy, not unclear. Meaning, if in reality the person's case was any of these, and these are definitely blasphemy, but the statement is not clear for you, like we said before, then even if it were explicit, but for you it's not clear, then don't rush to deem the person as a kafir. If you want, you can see clarity. If you want, you can just not think about it even and advise the person. Say, that statement you said sounds funny. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but you might need to check that. And as for me, I'm not even going to think twice here. But if it's clear, then you need to deem that person as a Catholic. وَمَنْ سَمِعَ شَرْحَ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ عَلَى الْوَجِهِ الصَّحِيحِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْ فِي هَذَا And there's no difference between someone who heard these issues from the Muslims in a proper way and the one, and the one who never heard them. The one who heard these issues in a proper way and the one who never heard them, they have the same judgment. 
these cases of comparing Allah to the creations, of denying destiny, of committing atheism, of sacrilege, disrespecting God or his messenger or the religion. But concerning whoever denied the attributes of Allah that the mind cannot independently confirm. Rather, they came in the Qur'an, and that's how we know them. They came in the Qur'an, so that's how we know them. As for the hadiths, doesn't have the same judgment, which we talked about. Because sometimes a person denies the hadith, not to deny the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, but to deny the reporters who attribute it to the messenger. So it wouldn't be kufr. So, as for those attributes of Allah that the intellect cannot independently verify, but they came in the Quran. Like al wajh and al yad and al ayn, which we're not going to translate as face and hand and eye. We're going to leave them in Arabic. Like when Allah says in the 88th verse of Surah Al Qasas, Everything shall perish but his wajh. وَقَوْلِهِ فِي سُورَةِ الْفَاتِحِ And what Allah said in the 10th ayah of Surah Al-Fatih يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ The yet of Allah is over their hands. وَقَوْلِهِ فِي سُورَةِ الْقَمَرِ فِي سَفِينَةِ نُوح And what Allah said in Surah Al-Qamar about the Ark of Noah in the 14th ayah of that surah تَجِرِي بِأَعْيُنِنَا that ship was sailing by our ayun. فَلَا يُكَفَّرْ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ عَلِمَ وُرُودَهَا فِي الْقُرْآنِ The one who denies these attributes of yad and ayn and wajah, he won't be deemed as a kafir unless he knew that they came in the Qur'an. وَمَعَ ذَلِكَ أَنْكَرَ إِضَافَتَهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى and despite that, he denied their attribution to Allah. Exalted is he. فَمَنْ قَالَ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ يَدِ لَيْسَ لَهُ عَيْنِ لَيْسَ لَهُ وَجِهِ So anyone who says, Allah does not have a yad, and he does not have an ayn, and he does not have a wajh, yani, he is not attributed with yad, and he is not attributed with ayn, and he is not attributed with wajh, لِأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا فِي الْقُرْآنِ Because he didn't know that this is in the Qur'an فَلَا يُكَفَّرْ Then he is not deemed as a disbeliever. لَكِنْ يُقَالُ لَهُ هَذَا وَارِدٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ But it would be said to him, this came in the Qur'an فَإِنْ أَنْكَرَ ذَلِكَ بَعْدِ عِلْمِهِ بِوُرُودِهِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ كَفَرْ then if he denies it after knowing that it came in the Qur'an, he blasphemed. Notice, Shaykh didn't say, then if he denied it after you told him. He didn't say that. He said, if he denied it after he knew it came in the Qur'an, then he blasphemed. Because maybe after you told him, he still didn't believe it. وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّافِعِيُّ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ مَنْ أَنْكَرَ الصِّفَاتِ اللَّهِ الَّتِي لَا تُدْرَقُ بِالدَّلِيلِ الْعَقْلِيِّ وَبِالرَّوِيَّةِ وَبِالرَّوِيَّةِ لَا يُكَفَّرُ لَا يُكَفَّرُ بِذَلِكِ And Imam al-Shafi'i mentioned, may Allah accept his deeds, that anyone who denies the attributes of Allah that cannot be confirmed by the mere mind or by thinking, that he is not deemed as a kafir for that, illa an ya'lama thubuta dhalika shar'a, unless he knew the religious confirmation of that. فَإِنْ أَنْكَرَ بَعَدَ الْعِلْمِ يَكْفُرْ Then if he denied after knowledge, he blasphemes. 
وكذلك يكفر من فسر اليد والوجه والعين المذكورة في الآيات الآنفة الذكر بالجسم في حق الله تعالى and likewise blasphemes whoever interprets the yad and the wajah and the ayn that have just been mentioned in those verses of the Quran as limbs or body parts in reference to Allah لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى مَا أَرَادَ بِهَا وَجْهًا كَوَجْهِ الْخَلْقِ because Allah did not mean by that a wajah like the face of a creation وَلَا يَدًا كَيَدِ الْخَلْقِ وَلَا عَيْنًا كَعَيْنِ الْخَلْقِ nor did he mean a yad like the hand of creations or a ayn like the eye of the creations لِأَنَّ الْوَجْهَ وَالْيَدَ وَالْعَيْنَ فِي حَقِّ الْمَخْلُوقِ أَجِسَّام because wajah and yad and ayn for the creation are bodies فَوَجْهُ الْمَلَكِ مَثَلًا وَيَدُهُ وَعَيْنُهُ جِسْمٌ لَطِيفٌ so the face of an angel, for example, and his hand and his eye, those are some subtle bodies. وَوَجْهُ الْإِنسَانِ وَيَدُهُ وَعَيْنُهُ جِسْمٌ كَثِيفٌ The face of a human and his hand and his eye is dense body. فَمَنْ فَسَّرَ الْوَجْهَ وَالْيَدَ وَالْعَيْنَ الْمُضَافَاتِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِمَعْنَ الْجِسْمِ كَفَرُ So anyone who explains the wajah and the yad and the ayn that's attributed to Allah Ta'ala as a body blasphemed. لِأَنَّهُ شَبَّهَ خَالِقَهُ بِخَلْقِهِ Because he would have compared his creator to the creator's creation. لِأَنَّ الْعَالَمَ جِسْمٌ لَطِيفٌ وَجِسْمٌ كَثِيفٌ Because everything in the world is either a subtle body or a dense body a uh, tangible body or an intangible body. Wallahu huwa alladhi ansha al-jisma wa awjadah. And Allah is the one who created the body. Ba'da an kana ma'duman after it was non-existent. Sawa'un kana jisman latifan am kathifa. Whether it were an intangible body or a tangible body. فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ اللَّهُ جِسْمًا لَطِيفًا So how would Allah be then? A subtle body. كَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنُّورِ أَوْ يَيِّضَوْ Like the angels in the light. أَوْ جِسْمًا كَثِيفًا كَالْبَشَرُ And how could someone believe that Allah is a dense body like a human? لَوْ كَانَ اللَّهُ جِسْمًا لَطِيفًا أَوْ كَثِيفًا لَكَانَ مِثْلًا لَنَا Had Allah been a subtle or dense body, an intangible or a tangible body, he would have been like us. Then it would be valid for him to have change and sickness and weakness and addition and subtraction. Just like all of that is possible for us. Had he been like the creations, then that would also be possible for him. This is something that the sound mind deems impossible. And it is something uh, invalidated by the sacred law. Like is proven by the 11th verse of Surah Shura when Allah says Laysa kamithlihi shayi Unlike him is there anything whatsoever فَهَذِهِ الْآيَةُ صَرِيحَةٌ فِي أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُشْبِهُ الْعَالَمَ اللَّطِيفَ وَلَا الْعَالَمَ الْكَثِيفِ بِوَجْهِمْ مِنَ الْوُجُوهِ This verse is explicit is clear in that Allah is not comparable to anything in the world. Intangible, yani, he's not comparable to anything in the world, intangible, nor to anything in the world, tangible. In any way, in any way whatsoever. Then Shaykh says, 
the important rules are complete. And here he put al al qawaidul muhimma the important rules. Wa subhanallah wa bihamdihi walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Uh, that's it. We completed the book. Subhanallah. Do you have any question I can answer for you? Naam, um, I have a question. Assalamu yes. alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam okay. wa rahmatullah. In regards to the part you mentioned about the attributes of Allah, you said there were certain attributes of Allah. If they denied it, they're not considered. Um, they wouldn't be considered committing kufr. Yes. Which ones were they again? The, the ones 13. that weren't mentioned. The 13 attributes. If you denied them, you will commit kufr. Whether you knew them or you didn't know them. Whether you heard about them before or you never heard about them before. You said would or wouldn't? You would. You would commit kufr. Those 13 okay, right. attributes. Yes. I, it was unclear the other time. I thought you said wouldn't. And I'm like, what do you mean? And now, now I just misunderstood. If I said that, that's a slip of the tongue. You would commit kufr for denying any okay. of those 13 attributes. Gotcha. Back, Lafiq. Amin, Lafiq.